So before we dive into this rather lengthy and rather extensive and detailed subject, there are a couple things we absolutely have to talk about. Things I've been compelled to talk about in lots of topics, but really specifically this one. I want to talk about objectivity. Being objective. And just so you don't think I'm making this up, if I read from uh, one of the dictionary sources, being objective, not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. Not being influenced by beliefs, opinions, feelings when representing facts. That's just huge. That is such an incredibly difficult thing for humans to do. That's what's going to be required in order to really get a full educational experience from this topic, in order to be able to eventually apply this topic to not just exercise, but to the people for whom it matters most, our clients and our patients. It's going to be required in order for us to not just continue perpetuating untruths. And therein lies another challenge. Um, it's going to test you in that regard. It's going to test you in terms of are your tendencies, like most people's, leaning towards a team and the comfort, security of being on the same team. And in this case, that team is, well, opposite of science. <laughs> it's a bold thing to say. But that has been the way humans have participated in science throughout the history of humanity. And there are numerous examples that I inherently bring up across the hours of this topic. Our teams are usually associated with following a person or a guru. And it is rare that someone says, a science-oriented person, a person who's been to higher levels of education, it's rare that they go, no, I follow this person. That's not ty typically what they admit to, but it's clear from the way people defend what a person says or what their organization says or what their belief system says. It's a really tough thing to do. Science pretty much demands that we question those things. And we may come up objectively with answers that continue to support the person we believe in, the organization we believe in, or the system of thought that we believe in. But it's not support for those things if we're using things that intentionally support those things. We have to actually look at things that appear to be to the contrary and look at them objectively. Really tough thing to do. Let me read this quote to you. It's from, um, actually, don't know the source. <laughs> it doesn't say, and actually I remember looking on the internet for a source and I, I couldn't find one, so I would, I would freely give one if, I, if it was available to me. But listen, the difference between someone guided by principle and someone driven by bias, a person who's guided by principle will stand up to his allies and side with his opponents, supposed opponents, at least that's how they appear to the team, will side with his opponents if truth and morality dictate it. A person who is driven by bias will go to war against reality in order to um, defend the identity of the herd. <clears throat> that is one of many quotes about this subject and certainly one of the best. This is liable to pop up in us, you as a viewer, certainly it did as in me as, you know, 30 years ago when I started exploring subjects similar to this and especially this one. <clears throat> it pops up when, you know, I mentioned people or a person or a guru 
and f even for people who don't think they have that because they're dedicated to science in their mind, authors, when their work is reviewed, when their work is objectively analyzed, many times people have an allegiance to an author. Sometimes they know that author. Sometimes they know that presenter. And they truly like or love that presenter, that person. That is one thing that's incredibly difficult. What we're going to do in this process is going to literally have nothing to do with the author of an article, a book, or of something that led to a belief system. And we're going to look pretty far back into the literature. Some people you will have absolutely no emotional feelings about because you may not have even heard of them. Others are somewhat contemporary and have had a major influence in the dissemination of this information. I've presented literature reviews where while a person in the audience wasn't offended or emotionally uh, influenced by 10 other names on a list when their friend, when their guru, when the person they respected popped up, all of a sudden I was the bad guy. This has nothing to do with opinions. This subject is going to be clearly an objective presentation. And on the occasion where there's something that is a potential, when there's evidence that, but it may not be a thorough evidence, it may not be a complete thought or understanding yet, it may be a partial contemplation, I will clearly state that. I will do my very best. One final quote <clears throat> relative to this topic. You see these authors, sometimes when presenting it, even if someone is listening and doesn't have any allegiance to the author or organization or book or whatever, we start to, um, well, I've done this. Are they lying? Are they just stupid? How could this be? How could they all be on the same incorrect page? People are always, almost always, presenting what is available at the time. The best thought and the best understanding at the time. And the dates of these things will be clearly presented throughout this presentation. And with that regard, without demonizing the author at all, being objective, I would like to present to you a quote by John F. Kennedy. The great enemy of truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, persuasive, and unrealistic. Too often we hold fast to the cliches of our forebearers. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. You're going to see how that hits home in this topic. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Keep some of those things in mind as you look through this information objectively.